Good morning, my friends. Welcome back. It's great to see you again. We have an exciting, exciting workout today. Got a big leg day ahead of us, and it was a planned leg day. We were gonna be doing leg day no matter what. But, but, in developing news, yesterday we took delivery of quite a large package. We have upgraded and achieved our dream belt squat setup and taking delivery of the Squat Max MD, now by Titan Fitness. I have wanted one of these machines for so long. Brian Hennessy invented this device a long time ago and recently sold the design to Titan Fitness to distribute it around the world with a little bit more ease. I actually spoke to Mr. Hennessy a couple months ago about working on a collaboration video with this device and unfortunately, he had just sold the rights to it to Titan Fitness and we were all unable to work together on that video. However, in the months that have passed, I've been talking with Titan Fitness and I am happy to say that Titan is sponsoring today's video, bringing us that Squat Max MD and giving you a true first impression video here. So right out the gate, thank you Titan Fitness for sponsoring today's video. As always though, I'm not under any obligation to say anything in particular about this device. In fact, I have not used it yet at all. I set the device up yesterday, it took me less than an hour, and I was dilly-dallying, messaging people on my phone, uh, sending out a couple messages here and there too. So it was a very quick setup. I was very eager to get it going. And as much as I wanted to load some weight on that bad boy and give it a test run, I waited to this morning to do this workout with you all to give you my honest, true and genuine first impressions on this device. So we're gonna get cracking on today's workout because we're not gonna be wasting any more time today. We're gonna be of course warming up with some hamstring work here on the leg curl and then we're gonna be spending the bulk of that video working on and talking about the squat max and using it as the main movement in today's workout. We're of course gonna get some other movements in today as well but we will only be showing that uh, if time permits today on camera at the very least. So without further ado, let's get started on some hamstring curls and then get over to the squat max, start working that bad boy, seeing what the limits are for ourselves, because that thing bolsts an impressive 1200 pound capacity, and I don't think we are going to get anywhere near that today. But let's find out. I'll see you over there. All right, everybody, time for the main event here. As I said, we got this bad boy built yesterday and it is sturdy. It is a sturdy beast. This thing weighs about 200 pounds and uh, it's got some nice wheels on it, but you're certainly not gonna be wanting to move this around every single day. The packaging was the absolute best that I've seen from Titan. A lot of the equipment in my gym is from Titan Fitness. I've got rack attachments, I've got the racks itself, I've got uh, grizzly handles, linebacker attachments, Viking press handles, dip stations, safety belts, safety squat bars, you name it. I've got a lot of stuff from Titan and I've taken orders from Titan delivered to my door numerous times over the last years. This is handedly 
the best packaging I've ever seen from Titan Fitness. Came on a pallet in a very sturdy crate with a lot of protection, a lot of packaging. Actually so much packaging that I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with all of it before garbage day in about two days here. Nonetheless though, this thing came very well protected, very secure, and in an amazing wooden crate with metal lined corners that was gonna ensure that this thing was not gonna take any damage that might be thrown at it in transit uh, through the freight lines. Now, it was delivered on a dolly by a freight company right to my door, and this thing arrived, y'all, in like three business days. I'm not kidding. The order was placed on like a Wednesday or a Thursday, and it arrived on a Monday. So, very quick turnaround, very quick shipping from Titan, per usual. They've never been slow with shipping. Uh, to get from Tennessee to Cincinnati never does take a long time, but this was uh, a lot quicker than I expected it. I took receipt of the Squat Max, and I also ordered the transformer pin with it as well. We'll be doing a review on that later, as that is still in shipping. That did ship separately via UPS. So we're still waiting on that item. Who knows when UPS is gonna deliver that, but we'll do a review on it once we actually receive it. As I already mentioned, putting it together took me less than an hour. The instructions were fairly clear, but to be as fair as completely possible, the instructions definitely left a little bit to be desired. Sometimes when you get into the nuts and bolts, no pun intended, of those instructions, they can get a little bit confusing. And what I ended up finding is actually the numbers and symbols within those instructions were not always 100% accurate with regards to what is actually packaged in the uh, box itself. In fact, the instructions and the packaging list on the instructions were different than what the instructions themselves said with regards to the diameters and lengths of some of the bolts that were included in the packaging. Nonetheless, if you're a little bit intuitive, it was fairly easy to figure out. Titan also includes all the tools that you're gonna need to put this thing together, so you don't even need to own any tools to get this put together. Now, I say that it would certainly behoove you to get your power drill out. If you've got a rack and you've got other equipment in your gym, I'm certain you have the tools necessary because you know how big of a pain it is to put these things together without some kind of power drill to really screw these bolts together. All the bolts themselves are black finished, which is a super nice touch and looks fantastic on this machine. And it is sturdy. These handles feel sturdy. The base is super sturdy. The knurling feels great. And the texture of the box squat pad is just absolutely divine with the nice Titan Fitness embossed logo on it. It's a beautiful product. This is probably the nicest thing I have in my gym at this point. And it is absolutely a dream come true to finally have one of these in my gym. I've been wanting one for years now. As I said earlier though, I have literally not even gotten on this thing yet to use it, to squat with it. I did bring over my Henny belt squat. Um, this did not come with the Titan Fitness Squat Max MD. They did include their own uh, belt squat, and I'll bring that over for you here to show you the differences. Now, as I said, Titan included their own belt with the Squat Max. This is the Henny belt, this is the Titan belt. Visually, they are almost identical. I've had the Henny belt for a little bit longer here, so it's a little less uh, still in their packaging look than the Titan one, but visually, they are almost identical. I will say that both of them feature the hook and loop system that the Henny belt has to adjust the length of it and the thickness or the width rather of the pads are exactly the same. So you're gonna get some very comfortable pad usage from this Titan Fitness squat belt. Physically touching them and physically squeezing them, the Titan one feels a little bit firmer than the Henny belt. And I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing. I'm gonna certainly be using this thing in the coming days and months uh, to give it its fair shake. But today we're gonna be using the Henny belt just because I'm familiar with it. And I'd like to keep the amount of things that I have to change to an absolute bare minimum. So we're gonna be using the Henny belt today. But the last thing I did wanna point out is the carabiner that Titans comes with. It's a very nice chrome plated, nice click action carabiner um, with a, a lock on the end of it too, so you can't spin it out. The Henny belt, of course, comes with a very nice carabiner as well. So neither one of these is necessarily better than the other, but they're certainly different styles to serve the same end means and end goal. That's enough blabbing about this thing though. How about we step on this, put some weight on there first, and actually start doing some reps. Now, of course, we've never used this machine before. We have no idea where the weight's gonna need to be for us to get an effective lift in here. So we're just gonna start off with 50 pounds on this, see where that takes us, and go up from there. Put the knee sleeves on because I would like to go relatively heavy today just to really take this thing through its paces. 
let's see what happens. Let's get after it. Handles here rotate. Uh, we've got a locking mechanism here under the loading pin. So when we want to uh, really start using this thing, we'll just simply stand up and then we rotate these handles and rotate the safeties out of the way. Super simple mechanism. Feels super smooth. Very sturdy as well. Those locking pins are very thick from when I was putting it together. Let's squat. The vertical drive is just so nice. There's of course a little bit of rubbing on that guide pin below, but uh, it is beautiful and so smooth to use too. Holy cow. I mean, the cable belt squat is amazing. The smoothest on that and those pulleys, you know, I paid for some uh, pretty decent pulleys for that thing. But I mean, you're literally just squatting straight up and down this weight. It feels absolutely fantastic. Dang. All right, uh, let's get some more weight on here. Let's see where we can find this thing's weaknesses. Now, I think in an ideal world, you would have plates that have handholds on them, or you'd have some plate spacers. That would certainly make loading these a little bit easier so you're not pinching your fingers, but also pulling them off too. But not gonna worry about that. I trust myself enough to not smash my fingers at least right this second. I'm sure I'm gonna eat those words sometime soon though. No. All right, up to 100 pounds here. Double the weight. Let's see what we got. Now you can of course add bands to this. I don't have them added at the moment. I've got plenty of bands I could add, but I don't feel like I need them as I'm not really trying just to train the upper part of the movement here with some additional weight. Keep it nice and consistent through that range of motion. This is so smooth and we are certainly ready for quite a bit more weight. Now we're loading 25s on there and there is still room to load a bigger plate. There is a foot plate that it's centered over this hole here and it's just a big old square that actually comes right out anytime you would need it to. And this is what you'll stand on if you want to get a more narrow stance. Now, if you're using bigger plates, if you wanted to use, let's say 45s, you would have to take this off and take a wider stance. Part of what the transformer pin will allow us to do is use those 45 pound plates and stand a little bit further back and still be able to get that narrow stance and activate more of the glutes in that squat movement. But with the plate here, you can take that narrow stance, that shoulder width stance, and get a very nice movement pattern. Got some nice locator pins on it, slots right into some holes, and you're right back at it. I'm gonna guess, I'm not gonna strip all the weights off here, but my 45 certainly won't fit through that hole, but I would wager those 35s will. I'm almost 100% confident that they will. So if you don't have a bunch of 25s, you could still get that narrow stance with 35 pound plates. Let's keep it going. Now, I'm 6'1 for reference here. Um, it feels like we're probably at the top end of that guide pin. So shorter people won't necessarily have any problem, but I do worry about that pin kind of coming out from the, the sleeve itself and the two separating. But um, I'm at the top of my range of motion here. The thing's not coming off, but if I was standing on blocks or any kind of uh, wedge, you might be at risk for that. Oh, good. That was awesome. All right. Now, one thing I did notice is that this pin is moving. It rotates. So obviously it can spin freely, but at the bottom down here, we've got a bit of a cutout that allows it to sit freely on those safety catchers. And it's rotating through that movement. Now, if I had to set it down on there, it was still gonna catch, but it would have been on the edge there of those and not touching a lot of the actual metal on the bottom of this 
weight pin. I wonder if there's a way to stabilize that a little bit more, but I'm not entirely confident that it's a huge risk to have it rotating and only touching small parts of that guide rod. All right, that was a decent amount of weight, but we could definitely do more. Other notable features on this device, we've of course got the box squat pad with beautiful red accented handles that have that pull pin technology behind them. So you simply pull it out and you can lift the seat up, lock it in place, and you can reset the height. I did have some trouble getting the seat into all three of the holes. You've got two on either side and one at the back. For whatever reason, when I initially put it in the hole, before it gets to that first pin location, it is just tough to get in there. I had to put my body weight on it to really just get it to move through it, but it's smooth other than that. But I tried all three holes and all three of them experienced the same thing where before it gets past that initial first pin, it is just really tight to fit through there. But once it gets in, the chrome plated uh, post that the seat sits on glides right on through that. You can use this seat for box squats if you're wanting to train specifically in a box squat fashion. You could also be using it for hip thrusts and I'm sure we'll find some other creative uses for it as well. But I am excited to give it a go at some point to do some hip thrusts on the squat max here and see what we're capable of. We do have one inch holes along the sides of the platform here. They're not on the front, but they are on the sides of the top platform. I don't know why Titan decided to do this, but these holes do not go all the way through the platform. I could certainly drill those out myself uh, because I feel like using them for J-cups or weight pegs would be a, a very smart thing to do, especially if you're in a home gym and you're trying to conserve space. But as they stand right now, they do not go all the way through and you wouldn't be able to bolt something into those. So if I ever do choose to bolt some weight pegs onto this, which is probably what I would do here, I would have to drill through that platform, which isn't the end of the world. I've got the tools and equipment and the skill to do that, but I'm not sure why Titan decided to ship this product with holes drilled at a uniform distance all along the side, but not all the way through so that you could actually make use of these holes. As I mentioned, the wheels on the feet here are very sturdy and very robust. They are some solid, solid wheels that are obviously gonna be able to take quite a bit of weight. The platform itself is rated uh, for over 1,300 total pounds. So you're gonna be able to load this thing up with a ton of weight. As it stands right now, we've got 200 loaded up on that pin and we've still got some room to go. Of course, we could throw a 35s on there and get a little bit more weight on there too. So we've got a lot of bandwidth here to load this pin up. That last set at 150 felt pretty darn good, but we were able to do a little bit more and I do wanna see where we can take this to get in that six to eight rep range. So let's get at this 200 pounds here. Let's see how this feels. Oh, this is just amazing standing up with it. You know, as you know, with a belt squat, you're not putting any load on your spine whatsoever. This, is th this thing is perfectly positioned to be starting here at the top range of that movement. So, you know, standing up just a couple extra inches and removing those safeties, you're ready to go. It's a fantastic feeling. Let's do it. That was good. That was really good. We can do more still, I think. But we're definitely getting there at that 200 mark. Now, the nice thing about this too, is that when we're at the bottom of that motion, if we get stuck down there, it's gonna be pretty simple. You just kneel out of it and unclip because this weight is then gonna be resting completely on the guide rod at the bottom. And I'm not gonna have, like I did on the cable system, a consistent tension pulling me down, trying to you know make me fumble and not get out of it. All right, 50 more pounds. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, 250. Let's do it. There we go, a little bit wider here with the plates coming up to the top of this pin and it's not the end of the world. Oh. 
Man, that felt good. I had to use the handles here, not to pull myself up, but to stabilize myself. I'm obviously still learning the movement here. So when I let go with this heavier weight, I definitely felt a little unstable there. And uh, I felt like I couldn't focus completely on pushing the weight up. So I think I'm gonna try it again with this weight without holding onto it and just you know, keep my arms up here. There's no additional benefit there. Uh, I'm not really cheating anything here by grabbing onto these handles. I'm certainly not pulling myself up in any substantial manner. It really is to just stabilize myself from moving uh, in any direction. But my goodness, this thing feels so smooth. I mean, literally, nothing is binding. Nothing feels like it's getting stuck or is grinding. Um, I don't have any bands loaded up, as I mentioned, but you've got two sets of band pegs on both the front and the back. So you could load up a lot of band weight here. I've seen videos where guys had over 700 pounds in band tension loaded up onto this dang thing. So um, you could use two sets of the short bands or if just one long band where you're wrapping it around to get it some more tension there and get even more weight loaded onto this pin. Next time I use this, I'm definitely gonna start by loading with the 35s on the bottom. That way we've got um, a little bit more weight on there and don't have to have this so tall or it's gonna be hitting my thighs. My thighs are obviously pretty large. So as this stack gets taller, I'm gonna be having to take a wider stance to get my legs around it. But this is 250 total pounds with just 25s loaded on there. And uh, we're just running into some kind of rubbing problems. All right, we're gonna throw another 25 on there. Really push this thing to its limits and push myself to my limits too. Uh, let's see what we're capable of. 250 felt great. Like we could really take it nice and slow and get some amazing hypertrophy work in there. But let's see what we're capable of. Oh, okay, a little bit wider. So we're not banging our knees on that post. And let's squat. Oh. Yeah, that's something, I tell you. Wow, holy cow. And the nice thing is we're right here. So if we wanted to quickly load off weight on there, we're just gonna take that, throw that on the floor, and we're ready to go if we wanna pyramid down. <sighs> Super simple. Let's do just that. Let's take off 50. There's 225. Let's hit it. Come on. Come on. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. I am supremely impressed with this thing. It is absolutely surpassing all of my expectations. I, I knew it would be obviously big improvement over my DIY cable setup, but this is just, like I said, a dream come true to finally have this thing. I've been wanting it for so long and we finally have it. Now, uh, weight comparison between the pulley system. Obviously on the pulley, we were doing around 300, maybe even a little bit more than that, uh, but we certainly have some differences in how that movement actually happens and how that weight ultimately ends up feeling compared to the cable system between and the squat max here. We're fairly close though. You know, we were doing 250 and we were struggling there, but I think what was happening is there's this guide pin below the weight pin here actually. And the guide pin that keeps this thing centered is rubbing on this if you're not uh, forward enough on this pin, meaning if you're kind of leaning back on this a little too much. And the last set I did there, I actually brought my feet forward just another inch or two, and it was actually feeling a lot easier with it not rubbing on that guide pin. So I think as long as we're centered appropriately over this, we're not gonna be running into that, and we should be able to crush a 300 pound squat on this, no problem. What I'll probably do is put some tape on this plate here to kind of indicate where I like to have my feet from a how far forward I like them just to keep that simple. But uh, this feels fantastic. 
looks fantastic and is a breeze to set up and use. You've of course got to have the room for it. It's about four feet wide, a little bit less than that, uh, maybe like three and a half feet wide. And uh, you know, obviously what, two and a half ish, uh, two feet tall or so. I'm 6'1", as I said, so you've also got to have some fairly tall ceilings and we're certainly pushing the limits in here, but I've got plenty of room over my head in my gym. So you've got to make sure you have the vertical clearance for that as well. Very pleased with this so far. I'm excited to give it another uh, use here in the coming days. I am certain I'm going to be using this on every single workout for the next couple of weeks and getting as much out of this as I can to really push my quads and my hamstrings and glutes to their utmost capacity. I'm excited to get that transformer pin and see how that changes the movement. It should give us some more glute activation, so it should be a nice thing to rotate in perhaps on our second leg day of the week and to use that device as well. It is literally just a pin that goes through the weight pin here and allows you to sit further back on it and get a different range of motion with these squats. However, next time, my big change is gonna be starting off with the 35 pound plates at the bottom, just to load a little bit more weight down here so that we don't have to worry about these coming up so close to our knees. Um, at this weight right here, it's absolutely perfect. We're not gonna be running into any crazy binding issues or hard stops where it's hitting us, anything like that. But starting with the 35s at the bottom will allow us to still use the foot plate down here, still keep that shoulder width narrow stance, and not have to worry about going into a wide squat here but it would certainly be easy to turn this into a bit of a wider squat and activate all the muscles a little bit differently and get some variation in those workouts too again i want to give a huge thanks to titan fitness for sponsoring today's video this is uh, one of my dream machines it's a dream come true to have this and be partnered up with titan i'm going to include a link down below to the squat max if you'd like to check it out for yourself or do some additional reading. If you guys use that link, it does help the channel, obviously, if you purchase anything on Titan's website, but certainly no pressure to do that. Again, link down in the description if you wanna read more about the Squat Max, but if you have any questions for me, please leave them down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them for you or do some more investigation on how this can be utilized, what its limits might be, or any other potential features that we might be able to crank out of this bad boy in regards to a home gym, because one of my qualifiers for a piece of home gym equipment is that we really don't like to have pieces of equipment that are dedicated only to one exercise. And I say that as I'm sitting directly next to a calf machine, but I really do like most of my machines to be multi-use. So with this, I know that at a bare minimum, we're gonna be getting three things out of it. We're gonna be getting our belt squats and all the variations that come from that. We're gonna be getting our hip thrusts. And then of course, we can also do some stiff leg deadlifts as well, or Ukrainian deadlifts, whatever you wanna call them. But there's the ability for us to attach a handlebar to this and do some nice, RDLs, stiff de leg deadlifts, whatever variation you might want to do with this loading gun. I'm excited to give those a try. We'll see how that functions and how well that feels as compared to using our dumbbells or our kettlebells or barbell. But I'm sure there's gonna be other things that we can crank out of this bad boy too. So let me know down in the comments what questions you have, what ideas you have for this machine, and let's give them a test out here in the next couple weeks. Thanks for showing up today, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Keep cranking out those workouts. Keep pushing towards your goals. You can achieve what you want can have all the things that you deserve and I believe in you. I really do. I'll see you guys next time.